Okay, so let's try this again. First, let's talk about the buffers. A buffer is something that maintains pH. So you would have a buffer for pH 7, a buffer for pH 10, a buffer for pH 5. It's something that maintains the pH of whatever it's in. So if we have our amino acid, In a neutral buffer so for instance for example let's say that this amino acid has a pi of 7 which is the isoelectric point so the isoelectric point is 7 which means at pH 7 this amino acid is neutral at pH 7 this amino acid has no charge now if I made the, um, the buffer solution more basic. So if I put our um, amino acid in say something with like a pH of, let's just say 10. So if I put some, if I put our amino acid in a new buffer now and it's pH 10, then that means our amino acid is going to be more negative. So more basic buffer, more negative protein. And you can think of this because of those examples that we mentioned in class. So these things, I always just think of OH by itself, right? OH is floating around whenever I think of bases. OH, OH is floating around and it's going to steal hydrogens from things because OH wants to be water. So it's stealing, plucking hydrogens from things. So our amino acid is going to be more negative. On the other hand, if I lower the pH and make it an acidic buffer, so I use a totally different buffer now, and this buffer, let's say it makes it a pH of four. Let's go with just an example. So if I'm lowering the pH and making it more acidic, then my amino acid is now positive. And it's positive because if you think of HCl, so HCl is a common acid that we all know about. Um, Cl is super happy by itself because you usually see it written like Cl negative and maybe you'll see like H positive. Cl is super happy floating around negative and he doesn't need anybody. So he's welcome or happy to donate these H's. So the positive H's are added to our amino acid, making our amino acid more positive. Okay, so our PI is our isoelectric point, and at this point, our amino acid is neutral. If we make it more basic by raising the pH, by putting it in a new buffer that has a higher pH, we will have a negative amino acid. And on the other hand, same thing the other way. If we make it more acidic by lowering the pH, we're gonna have a more positive amino acid. And the same concept works for proteins in general, okay? So I have this protein, it's a big glob, and again, it has a PI of seven, so it has no charge, but if I make it more basic and raise the pH, then 
my protein will have negatives all over it, okay? And on the other hand, if I make the buffer more acidic, and let's call this a pH of, what did I say before, four? That's a good one, pH of four. Then my protein will have positives. So this buffer system is really important. Depending on the environment of the protein or the amino acid, um, and the environment meaning the pH, it's going to have a different charge, a charge or no charge. So this is important, okay. So with all of this in mind, let's talk about columns. Okay, so a column is just like, it's a big glass, long skinny glass tube, kind of like the images on the slides, but I'm just gonna draw it big. So let's say that this is the bottom of our column because the columns are long, it goes up really high. The resin that you pack the column with, so like the stuff that goes inside, is um, very, very small beads. Most of the time it's like a fine powder. It's like you wouldn't know that it's um, beads, for example. But I'm going to, I mean they have bigger beads too, but a lot of times, but they're definitely not huge beads. So but I'm going to draw huge beads to like get the point across. Okay. So our huge beads, let's say we use CM, and CM has a negative charge. So CM is the beads. So the beads that we're using, we're using CM beads, so all of our beads are negative, okay? And I want to introduce a protein, a, a mixture of proteins, because that's the point of the column. The point of the column is to separate them out. So if I'm entering, if I'm adding some negative proteins, and some positive proteins, okay, I'm adding, I'm adding this whole mixture. To my column, the positive proteins will be stuck. And the negative proteins will elute. They are eluted from the cough. They come out, okay? That's just about the beads. And it's, it works the exact same, but opposite whenever you're using, because it's positive. So the beads would be positive, so they're going to attract um, negatively charged proteins. Either way. I totally wrote this wrong. Whoopsies. Okay. Positively charged beads will attract negatively charged, these blue, negatively charged proteins. So, that's just talking about beads in general. Nothing else. We haven't even talked about adding a buffer to the column yet. So our question earlier in class asked, okay, if you have, if you have a PI or an isoelectric point of 10.4, what, and that you know that your protein is an isoelectric point at 10.4, you know that this is for your protein. So if that's the case, then at pH of 10.4, your protein is neutral. If we have, so let's say, um, uh, let's say that this is like seven, this is 12, this is, I don't know, two or something. This is our pH scale. And on one side, it's more basic. So this makes 
proteins have negative charges. And on the other side, it's the more acidic makes proteins have a positive charge, right? Okay. So what we know is that at 10.4, our um, target protein is neutral. So if I put this protein in an acidic environment, the protein will have a positive charge. If I put this protein in a basic environment, it will have a negative charge. So the question asked what bead and what buffer would you use? Well, it's much easier to make this protein positive. Look at all that positivity over there. Going above 10 um, is difficult. The buffer needs to find the equilibrium between um, whatever the ions, to maintain a pH. That's the point of a buffer, is to maintain a pH. So it's really hard for something to maintain a pH so high, like 12 is the max, you know? So it's really hard to, like, you don't have wiggle room to, like, bounce around to find the, you know, happy middle equilibrium. So it makes more sense that we go down here. Because basically, you know, if you get too low or too high, buffers are not really reliable. So we're going to use a more acidic buffer. So we're going to make our proteins going to end up being more positive because we are going to use a buffer in lower than 10.4. So if that's the case, if we're making, if we're using a buffer that's lower than 10.4, so our protein now has a positive charge, it makes the most sense to use CM, right? So now we have negative charge beads. And when we put our protein in, it'll get stuck. Perfect. Um, what pH would you use? Well, you want to stick around this area. This is a good, happy place. So if we use a pH of like 9.5 to 10, then this little range, it's just enough to make our protein positive. So our protein's still gonna be positive because it's a lower number than 10.4. So it's just enough to make our protein positive, but it's not like if we chose two or something over here, if we chose a buffer down here, then everything in between, like everything that has a positive charge from here down to here would collect on the column. And we're trying to be specific, so we're going to find a small range on one or the other side of this isoelectric point. Okay, so at the end of the day, we are going to take our column, we are going to fill it with negative beads because we're using CM CM resin, which has a negative charge. And we're putting in our, our mixture. We have a whole mixture of stuff, right? And our target molecule is also here. So when we put this whole mixture of stuff in, our protein, at a, um, whenever we have a 9.5 to 10 range of a buffer, our protein is just negative enough, it's a good place, just negative enough to bind. And everything else falls through. So, remember, if Let's say the red proteins are proteins that have a um, PI of like five. So they are neutral right here. So using 
a buffer at 9.5 would actually make the red proteins more negative, right? Because if we, let me make that P look better. So if we use, um, if, our, if our protein has a PI of five, then anything on this side of it, anything above five, is gonna be a negative charge. And if we put it in a pH below five, it's gonna have a positive charge. So remember, it's very specific for each protein. So you find the PI, and if you go um, above the PI, you're gonna make a negative, and if you go below the PI, you're gonna make a positive. Okay, PI is neutral, and I'm using PI as if it's pH. So if you go, if you find the PI at the neutral pH, if you raise that pH, you're gonna have a negative protein. If you lower that pH, you're gonna have a positive protein. So in our case, for our protein, it was easiest to select a um, more acidic buffer there's like an actual buffer range that's down here. So since we're using an acidic buffer, our protein is gonna be positive. Since our protein is gonna be positive, we're gonna use these negative beads, the CM resin. So if we have another PI, let's say this is 11 or something, then by using 9.5 or 10 buffer, then we are using a pH that's lower than this PI, PI 11. So that protein is going to be positive. So we're going to collect anything on this column that's positive, but the idea is to make it as small as when a window as possible. So use this little buffer range right after where the protein is, and then um, use beads to match the charge that you're creating from the buffer.